Hi, my name is Chris Bailey, and I make Blender YouTube tutorials over at C Bailey Film. You can go check my stuff out. Also, I make them here at CG Cookie. We're going to be talking about how to do procedural spider webs using geometry nodes. Let's get started. Go check out our Fundamentals of Animation in Blender course on cgcookie.com. Or if annual membership isn't your thing, you can find the course as a standalone product on the Blender market. Links are in the description below. Okay, so I'm gonna jump right into it. This is a plot to get through and it's pretty complex, but it's gonna be very cool. I'm gonna just go over here, switch to Geometry Node Editor, and uh, we can just use our cube. I'm gonna get rid of the camera just so it's not cluttering up our view and this light. Um, and uh, let's keep our default cube, why not? I'm gonna click new to create a new geometry node system and I'm gonna call this spider web. Let's go ahead and plug the input from the output. We're not gonna be using the cube at all, so we can delete that. First thing we wanna to do to get a spider web is we need to get some mesh to work with. So I'm gonna do, uh, let's see, a mesh primitive and I'm gonna grab a UV sphere. The reason why I'm using a UV sphere is because if you look at the wireframe, uh, we get this nice kind of spider web pattern already. And that's one of the biggest tricks with geometry nodes, finding things that kind of sort of get you off to the right start by creating the shape you want. Uh, and we can like kind of mold it from there. So we're gonna start off with this. And the basic process that we're gonna go through to make this spider web is first, we're gonna delete everything that's sort of below this point on the Z plane. So we just have this half circle. Then we're gonna squash it, right? So it's flat like a spider web would be. And then we'll have this nice web thing. Then we're gonna delete the ring that's the edges on the outside. We're gonna get rid of those. And then we're gonna select all the points that are left on that outside and stretch them out. So we get these nice long strands that go towards connecting the spider web to, you know, some kind of space. Then we're gonna do some noise and stuff to kind of change the shape of those. We'll do some cool math. I'll show you how it all works. So first thing we're gonna do is cut this sphere in half and then squash it down. So, so the easiest way to cut the sphere in half is to look at the position of every vertex on our sphere and say, okay, delete the ones that are below a certain point on the Z plane. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's first, we're gonna take a separate XYZ node, I'm gonna drop it here. We're also gonna to wanna to grab a position node. The position node gets the position of every vertex. It's always just about vertexes, the position node. So it's all the vertexes, every position. So we feed this into here and we wanna ask, all right, which ones are below a certain point on the Z? So let's just get the Z out and we'll do some math on it. So grab the math node. The math node is a great feature in the drop down here called greater than or less than. We can use these. So we could say, okay, everything that is less than a certain threshold. So here's our value, which is gonna be the Z value. We're gonna analyze the Z value and say, okay, what's below zero, but that's actually not gonna quite return everything. We actually need to do just a little bit less than zero. So um, zero point, let's go negative uh, 0 0.1, let's say. And we wanna use that as our selection. So grab all those points and we're gonna delete them. So let's grab the delete geometry. We wanna make sure it's set to uh, all is fine. And we're gonna use this as the selection. Bam, okay, so there you go. You can see if this is zero, by the way, uh, it's gonna delete that extra row there because the one that sits right on zero goes under this threshold as well. So if we just change that, um, it'll it'll work. All right, great, so we have a half circle. Now let's squash it. We're gonna grab the transform node, drop it here, and we're gonna take the Z and set it to zero. We now have a flat circle. We're on our way to having a spider web, awesome. All right, so now we wanna delete the edges that we have here around the, the outside ring of our sphere because spider webs don't have that, do they? No, they don't. So, okay, let's get another delete geometry. We're gonna use the same basic principle here. So delete geometry, bring this over here, but instead of point, let's switch this to edge. And also what we wanna do is use this, not the position and separate, but we are gonna use a less than. So let's come back over here. Remember this is just found in the math node. So you can just create a new math node and set this to less than or greater than. We'll stick this value into the selection, but we need to kind of give it a little bit more information. This can't just be a straight up value. We wanna actually go for the uh, index, which is this number listed here. So if you see our edges, this is 512. Um, if we scroll all the way to the end of this list, there it is. You can see we've got 511 indexes. It's because the first index is the index zero. So if you were to count them all, you'd get 512, but if you look at the actual index number, it's only 511. An index is basically just a, a label, uh, an ordered label for every um, edge that we have in this case. You've also got them for vertexes. Everything has an index. All right, so how do we decide, how do we tell Blender we wanna delete these edges specifically? Blender always kind of starts in the middle and works its way out in terms of counting the edges. Right here on our edge list, you know, all the way at the start, like all the way back to zero, this is gonna be right here in the center area. These here are gonna be the first 
the first uh, sort of ring of edges. So all the way at the end here, all the way back here, 511 is the final index. That's gonna be one of these edges out here at the very, very uh, outside of our object. So we can use this index number to tell Blender which ones we wanna delete. You know, we wanna basically delete a certain set of these. So everything above a certain number, let's say 490, everything above 490, let's delete 491 through 511 of indexes, okay? So that'll get rid of all those edges. So that's how we can kind of narrow it down for Blender to know which one to do. So in order to do that, we need to actually, we can get this index number directly. So let's analyze this index number for everything and check to see if it's greater than 490, okay? So first we need to get the index node. So this will grab the index of every edge because uh, we're looking at edges specifically with the delete geometry. And we want to do some math on it. So let's grab math. And uh, we want to do greater than, right? Because we're going to say, okay, what's greater than 490? Grab those. So let's switch this to greater than, plug the index and the value. And uh, the threshold will be 490, let's say. And we'll take the value and plug that in as our selection. So this is how it's going to say, okay, everything that's greater than 490, we'll get those indexes and let's pass that here. And those are the ones we're going to delete. So if I um, feed this now into the system, well, you'll see that we get some edges deleted. Not enough though, let's increase that number. So 490, let's drag this down and you can see more and more edges start to, to disappear. And once we finish that ring, it's gonna start deleting the, the connecting edges there. Uh, but we wanna keep those. So let's actually find where's the right number for these guys. So it's between, so 480 and 479. So if I type 479, that should be the correct number. So evidently 479, let's find the index row right around here. Oh, okay, this is actually, you can see it's um it's truncated it, right? Because we're actually analyzing always from the group output. So if I go back to here, um, you can see everything from 479. So from right here down, all of these are those outer ring of edges. That's what we've selected and deleted. Hope that makes a bit of sense. Now what we wanna do is actually select these guys and these final ones, these little ones right at the end, we wanna select all of those points and stretch them out. Okay, so first thing we need to do is figure out what's the index of all these points that we wanna grab because we need to do another selection, all right? So if we look here under vertex, we've got 257 vertexes left at the moment. So let's do something very similar. Let's grab index, greater than, duplicate those, bring them over here. And let's just use delete geometry for now. We'll set this to point. This will just help us find them and figure out what they are. So. I'll plug this back into the selection. So uh, let's see, our final uh, entry here indexes for vertexes is 256. So it needs to be something less than that. So let's just pick something random, maybe 240. Put that in here. Let's grab everything that's greater than 240. So these right here, these vertexes, let's delete those and see what disappears. So we've got that set to point. So it's gonna delete vertexes. I'll bring this up here. And okay, we've lost a few, so that's good. Let's keep bringing this number down. There we go, I can see them disappearing. And let's find where's the correct, there we go. So 254, no 224, I mean, sorry. So 224 is the, uh, everything above that. So that's the correct index we want. So that's our selection. So we've got the right selection. We don't wanna delete them, we wanna move them, right? Whenever you wanna move a point in geometry nodes, you wanna use the set position node. That's the one you always go to, okay? To move specific vertexes. So let's bypass that delete geometry. Let's just get rid of it. And let's go set position and let's drop it here. And let's plug this into our selection. So, okay, now we wanna move these guys, right? But how do we do that? Let's think about this. I can move them all you know, one way or another way, you know, but what I want to do is actually move them out, move them away from the center point. Um, so how do we do that? So you might think, all right, but let's just scale those points out because that's what I would do if I was modeling this, right? So if you grab a transform node, which is the only way to actually kind of scale something, uh, you can see there's no selection input. So we can't just transform a certain part. We could try scale, uh, but we only get scale instances, right? But these aren't instances. So we actually need to come up with a way of giving a unique offset value for each individual point. That's a little bit different for all of them to get them to move in the right direction. So how on earth do you do that? Well, we're gonna use some linear algebra. So put on your academic math hat and uh, get ready to learn some linear algebra if you don't already know it. Um, I've just created another object um, in edit mode here and I'll select, I've got two points, I've got one, hiding down here at the origin, I'll delete that. There he is. And I've got one up here. So if I had to take these two guys and hit F to fill, that'll draw a line between the two of them. And it's helpful sometimes to think about points in 3D space as being a line from that point to the origin, just to help you visualize what's going on a little bit. If I go to the item, I can click this vertex and it shows me the position of this in 3D space. So the X, Y, and Z location, which is you know represented 
by these numbers, and this is what it looks like when you see it. So the line from this point in 3D space to this origin, how would I move this point further out but keep it on this line, basically? Well, the easiest way to do it is actually just to multiply these values by just some numbers. So we can actually see it. I'll just duplicate this vertex and I'll take each of these guys and I'll just multiply them each by two. Multiply that, multiply this one by two and this one here, multiply by two. So let's find that point. Where did it go? It's way out there. If I take that point and take the origin again and hit F, you see it draws another line and they're on the same line. So when you take any point in 3D space and multiply it by a number, 2, 4, 3.7, any number, it's going to move on a line represented by that point and the origin of the object. So it's going to basically move it away from the origin of the object. So in our case, we've got our spider web. What we want to do is take each of these points, select them, and then just multiply them by a number. And that number can represent how far away we want them to go from the center point. So back into geometry nodes now, we need to figure out how to do that offset for each of these points. So we need to grab the position first of every single one of these points. Now we've got our selection working. So we just go here and grab position. This is the position node. This will always grab the position of every vertex in your object. And we want to say, all right, I want to take the position of every vertex in this selection group and I'm going to multiply them by a number. So I'll grab a vector math node because we're dealing with vectors. Remember, because a position, oops, position is those, you know, those three points in 3D space. So we need the three numbers to work with here. So I'll take this position, I'll plug it in here. And the bottom one, we don't need a vector, we just need a normal number. So we can actually just grab a value, shift a value node, and we can plug it into the bottom slot here. And let's set this to two, okay, like we had before. So this will move everything. We want to add, we want to multiply as well. So we can get an even greater distance. And let's uh, let's plug this in to the offset. There we go. So now you can see our selection has narrowed down just those points. And this value now represents the scale to scale out those points. Pretty cool, hey? Hope you enjoyed that. All right, let's keep moving. All right, now if I switch back to shaded mode, you see we still have this you know disk. We want to get rid of all this geometry because we actually just want to be seeing the edges um, in our final piece. So let's go ahead and delete just the faces. We can do that with the delete geometry node and we're going to set this to face and only faces. Actually, we keep this to point. Only faces should work. There we go. Yep. So that's going to delete everything. That's a face. All right. Now, let's see what the spider web is the distribution of these rings is not quite right, right? Like they're actually supposed to be kind of closer together and then they spread out the further out it gets. So we need to kind of change this somehow. So Let's go ahead and figure out how to do that. I'm going to come over here and we're going to be using set position again. We need to change the position. So let's go ahead and get a set position node. I'll just duplicate this one, drop it here. Uh, now what we need to do is, is kind of randomize everything a little bit. But first, let's get a nice even distribution. Now, a great way to get an even distribution. Um, so we want to take the center rings and move them in closer to the center. And every ring that gets further and further out, we want it to kind of be further out from the center as well. So to change the distance of things based on how far away we're from the center, we need to first find out how far away something is from the center. So let's get the position of everything first. So I'm going to grab the position node and then I'm going to get the, let's see, let's get the vector math node again. And there's a function in the vector math node called distance. Let's grab that distance. There we go. I'll plug the position in here and I want to find out what's the distance from this position, the position of every point from zero, zero, zero. And this is going to send out not a vector, but just a floating point number. So it's not a vector position. It's just like a value. It's, you know, it's 10 units away. It's 0.2 units away. Let's take this now and let's grab a math node. And in order to get the sliding effect to work really well, um, if we switch over to uh, the power function, this is going to really help us. And I'll, I'll do this in stages so you can see it uh, at play. So let's grab one more vector math node. Just drop this here, make a little bit more room. And let's take the position of every point and uh, let's multiply each position by the distance. So basically, as further it gets away, the farther uh, it's going to be um, scaled away from the point. So let's set this to the offset. You can see it starts to distribute everything out really well. Um, now, if we increase this a little bit more by using um, this here, the power, basically, as these numbers get bigger, they're going to get bigger uh, proportional to how big they are. Drop this here. And then as we increase this exponent, you can see what happens. It starts to 
reorder the distribution. So there we go. So sticking with mine with nine kind of gives me the right look. So to break this up and make it a little bit more random in the way it's distributed, let's add some random values in right about here. So I'm going to grab a random, random value node, and I'm going to grab a, actually I'll just duplicate this vector math node. I'll switch it to add, because we don't want this to scale. Uh, it's going to be a little too even if we scale. So if I come here and plug this into the vector. You can see it's going to really break things up. If we had this set to multiply, you can see it's only going to do the outside, but the closer we get into the center, the more even they're going to get. We just want to kind of add a number to everything. So I'm just going to change these max values down a little bit. Uh, you can just play with these, the min and max, until you get something that you like. Next thing we want to do is turn this into actual web. So right now it's just edges. We need to actually get some geometry onto these edges so that it works. So to do that, we're going to turn this into a curve first, and then we're going to convert that curve back into geometry because the curve to mesh node gives us another input, which is for a lofting curve, which will help us to loft some geometry across the surface. So let's go over here and let's go uh, mesh to curve. Just drop this here. So now it's a curve. Easy. And now we want to go curve to mesh and drop this here. Now it's mesh again, but we get this profile curve. So I can go over here and grab a circle. We want to grab a curve circle. Don't get the mesh one. The mesh one won't work because we're working on a curve at the moment. And uh, we can make the radius really small, 0.01, something like that. Resolution as well. I'm just going to drag it all the way down to three to make it super simple. And I'll drop this into the profile curve. There you go. So now you can see we've got actual mesh. We can adjust this radius as well. So maybe 0 0.001. One thing that we've done uh, that's actually going to make it a little difficult to be very procedural is the fact that um, the way we've built this, we can't really come over here now and change our original UV sphere and get everything to work properly. It's going to start breaking things. So if you see if I change my segments, we lose control of the look, which isn't what we want. We want to have something that's going to be so procedural that we can like change the segments and everything's going to dynamically update. So we need to solve one little problem with the way we built this. And that is right around here. If we look at where we're doing our selections. So let's take a look at this one. Everything that's greater than a threshold of 224. Remember when we looked those up in the spreadsheet, we found the exact numbers and we deleted everything above a certain number. Well, if we change this, this number is going to change, right? But there is an internal logic to it, OK? If you look at this right over here, let's grab our, and we're going to bring it right back over here so we can examine some of this stuff. If I look at this one here, we've got a value of 479. Let's have a look at what happens before it. So I'll plug this in here. If I go to the edges, we've got 512 edges, and we're going to delete everything that's above 479. Well, what's the difference between 512 and 479? 512 minus 479 is 33. It's one off the number that represents our segments. Now, why is that? Well, first off, it's because we're working with, you gotta remember this one here is working with the index number. So it's first index is zero. So 479 means there's actually 480 edges. So technically what we're looking at is 512 minus 480, which is 32, which is exactly the same number as our segments. Oh my gosh, we found the connection. Basically, the segments are how many edge loops there are, how many um, edges uh, form up one big loop. So it doesn't matter how many segments we have. What we can always do is take the number of these segments here and subtract it from the total number of edges. And we're always going to get the final set of edges that we want to delete. Super easy. So let's do that. So first off, let's set something to drive this segments. I'm going to grab a value node and I'll just input the same number, 32 and plug this in here. So this will be what we can change to universally change things all around. So now we need to actually find out, OK, how many uh, edges are there in our UV sphere in total uh, before we do our selection? So we need to use something called the attribute statistic node. So I'll just bring this right here. We're going to grab the geometry before we do our selection and pop it in. And this will give us something. So we can set the, let's see, edges we want to look at for this particular one, because we're going to delete edges. I want to look at what's the maximum number of edges that I have in this thing. And I want to get a math node, drop this right here. So I'm going to take the maximum number of edges, and I'm going to subtract it from this. Now, this number should be the same as this number right here. So let's find out. I'll plug this in, and then we'll take our geometry back to the end. And it didn't work. Why is it not working? Well, it's because we're missing one little thing. We actually have to tell it what it is that we're trying to get the maximum of. We want to get the maximum of the index. So let's grab the index, put it here, and we'll drop it in there. And bam, suddenly everything's working. 
There we go. So I've set this one up as well. You can see it's going to be the same. We've got right before the right before we do the, the set position where we have a new selection, I've grabbed the statistic of the geometry for how it is at this point in our system. And I've taken the maximum index number for all the points. So I've changed this to point from edge. And now it's going to take that number, subtract it by once again, the number of segments. And that'll give us the exact number for the outer rings. And now when I come over here and change this, you can see it's going to work. Now we go back to the original UV sphere node, change the rings to increase the number of uh, web segments we've got. And radius will increase the overall size of this web. So I'm going to come over here to my shader editor. I'm going to go ahead and turn on rendered view. And under rendered view, just to make things a bit easier, I'm going to turn off scene lights and scene world. And I'm just going to use this HDR that's built in to Blender to have a look at things. And I'm going to turn my opacity up so I can see it. Uh, now, the first thing I want to do is actually change the angle of my my uh, web. So I'm just going to rotate on the X 90 degrees just to put it up. There it is looking really nice. OK, so let's uh, turn off uh, all of our handles and stuff so we can see just the web itself. And I'll zoom in here and uh, let's create a new material. Now, this material won't be assigned directly to this because we have to do that from within geometry nodes, but we can just create it here for now. So um, we'll just call this web. And with the web material, what I'm going to do is come all the way down to the bottom here and I want to turn my transmission all the way up to one. Transmission allows light to pass through something, basically makes it, you know, like glass or uh, ice or something. So we also need to change a single setting. So I am going to open up my shader editor and find it. Where is it? There it is. Uh, and we need to open up the options tab on the side here. And we need to set the blend mode, the alpha blend mode from opaque to alpha hashed and shadow mode. We can set it to alpha hashed as well. This will allow transparency to work in Eevee. That's just an important setting you've got to do whenever you're doing transparent materials with the alpha or tr transmission or anything like that for it to work in Eevee. All right, great. So we've got this web material. Let's go ahead and apply it now to our web. So to do that, let's head back over to our geometry node editor, come right to the end. And then what we can do is go shift A and set material is the node we want. We can drop it right here and then we can select our web material. Now we are getting these kind of hard rim light edge things, and that's because of how few res uh, the res low resolution of our curve circle. If I turn these up a bit, you're going to get a nicer kind of fall off. So I might set this to like 15 or something. Now, one thing you might want to do just to kind of you know, jazz it up and land your image is put some water droplets on here. So we can do that pretty easily by creating a uh, mesh. We're going to go mesh primitive. We're going to grab a UV sphere and drop it here. Grab the distribute points on faces node, and we're going to take our mesh, we'll pipe it into here. This will distribute a whole bunch of points across our the surface of our, our web. Join geometry node, drop this here and pipe this one into it. That will bring the web back in. And then what we can do is we can instance on points. And I'll just drop this before we join it. And we can set this mesh as the one we want to instance. But again, I'm going to turn my segments down just to kind of keep things a bit more lightweight. I'll take the mesh and I'll plug it in as the instance. We're going to want some kind of random scale on these guys. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to grab a I'm going to grab a random value node. I'm also going to grab an ID node. I'll plug the ID, plug the ID into the ID here on the random value. And then I'm going to set my scale to be something like between, I don't know, 0.01 and 0 0.5. And I'll plug that in there. That will randomize that point. Now, I know you're thinking there's probably one more thing that I'm missing, and that's how do you get a web to actually curve in between each of these line bits? Because technically, the webs do do that, right? They each have this little like kind of curve bulge in towards the center. You get these like rounded sections. The short answer is it's pretty complicated and we don't have time in this tutorial, but I can show you the recipe and I'll give you my lightning explanation for it. Basically, you can think about this web as being a circle of 360 degrees, right? Each of these segments that we've set are equally distant, right? Along this 360 degrees. So if we divide the segment number so the number of segments by 360, we're going to get a degree, an angle basically of degrees that shows us what is the what is the angle of each of these, right? Then what we can do is we can take any point along this uh, this web. So one of these points, let's say up here, and we can say, all right, what what's the what's the angle in degrees of this line from the zero point out to here? Then what we do is we divide that right by this special angle that we figured out. And if it's got no remainder, then that means it lies right on that angle. If it does have a remainder, it means it's somewhere in between one of these. 
And what we can do is use that remainder as the thing that scales how far we push it in towards the center. So let me show you how that plays out. So the first thing we want to do is take the position of every point and we want to separate the X and Y coordinate of every point. And we're going to use the arctan function in the math node. So if you grab the math node, you can find it just over here, arctan2. And you have to enter them in this way. So the Y goes in the top, the X goes in the second one. Then this arctan is outputting a radian, which represents the uh, angle of that vector. Then we need to convert that to degrees. This is also with the math node. We've just used the two degrees uh, section right here, two degrees. So that converts it to like, you know, 360 degrees, 90 degrees, it converts it into that kind of a uh, angle. Then what we want to do is take this number, which is 360, which is the full circle divided by, if we go all the way back, our magic segment number. So that's going to give us this angle in between two of these lines. So then we take this, this new number that we got here, this degree, we divide it by this, and then that's going to give us another number. Now what we're going to do is find out, is there any remainder here? So we can use the fraction function, which is also in the math node. Drop this out here, you can find it right there. There it is, fraction. So we take the fraction and it's just going to give us the remainder of that, that, that operation, right? So now what this is going to give us is something that doesn't look quite right. If I just plug this in, you'll see what it looks like at this point. Let's go ahead and hook this up to the system so you can see how it works. Now I need to plug it in basically for back here for that position while we're still working on a curve. Okay, now it's going to look a bit crazy and it's mostly because we don't have enough subdivisions. So we actually need to subdivide this at least once we get some extra points. So we're going to go for a subdivide mesh node. We'll drop this here and we'll just leave it with a subdivision level of one. That's fine. I'll plug this back in so it's getting from the correct point. Now you can start to see what this thing's doing. Okay, so what it's doing here with the fraction, you can see that it starts up high and it kind of goes down each time we have one of these segments. And it's not quite working in the way I want it to. So I'm going to add one more node, which is the ping pong node, also in the math node. So if you find here, you can open this up and go for ping pong. If I drop this in right here and set this to 0.5, it's going to allow this sort of backwards and forward motion using those values. So you get this like snowflake looking thing. Then what we can use is a multiply node at the end to change the direction or it's the size, the amount of it. And now we've got this jagged pattern. And all we have to do now is use a subdivision surface node to create a curve out of it. So once we take this right here, so we can plug this into the system now. I'll just drop it into this. So we go from here to the mesh to curve node. And then I'll plug this one back in. If I come right over here after the set position and we go subdivision surface, I can drop it here and you can see it's going to curve that out. If I set that to two, it's going to get even more uh, curvy. And now I can go back here and use this final multiplication to kind of regulate how much that curve goes in. And there you have it. We've got a procedural spider web using geometry nodes. I hope you enjoyed that deep dive into the math, the crazy things that go on to make something like this happen. If you feel overwhelmed by any part of this, don't stress, focus on the stuff that makes sense and try and practice these different node setups and use them in your own projects. The more you kind of figure out geometry nodes, you kind of add this tool set of node groups together in your brain to kind of get this like massive collection of, oh, if I want to achieve this look, I just need to use this combination. You don't always have to understand what's going on underneath the surface, but if you can, it does really help. So take a deep dive and play with it, figure it out for yourself. Hope you really make some great progress with this tutorial. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to check out cgcookie.com. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button if you want to find out when we're going to be dropping new tutorials, ring that bell for notifications as well. And please leave us a comment let us know what you thought of this tutorial and what you'd like to see in future tutorials. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much. I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, see you later.